Well, good morning. Um, excited to start a brand new painting today. Um, I'm actually in a, in a new space now. Uh, my wife had me tucked downstairs in the uh, basement for a while, but uh, I finally got uh, my office area back and decided to convert it into a painting studio as well. So uh, pretty excited about that. Um, so you may have noticed the new surroundings. Uh, anyway, we're going to start a, a new painting today. Um, uh, but before I get discussing that, just wanted to ask you to please subscribe to my YouTube channel, uh, Mark Harvel Art. And um, you'll find a lot of, of different painting tutorials and demos that I hope you'll find um, useful. So um, what we're going to be doing today is uh, we're going to do a portrait painting. I've been doing portraits quite a bit lately and um, I've just been kind of in the mood to do that as well but I've also had a few um, commissions for portraits so kind of got me in the spirit of doing that. Um, but what I wanted to do is a portrait of Albus Dumbledore from Harry Potter. Um, and for those Harry Potter fans, when, when Albus Dumbledore um, passed away in, in the book series, um, his portrait appeared on the wall with the other headmasters of Hogwarts. And so that's what this painting is supposed to represent is um, Albus Dumbledore, uh, his, his headmaster portrait. So I've done a little bit of prep work. Um, we're working on an 18 by 20 inch canvas, um, 18 by 24 inch actually. Um, I've come through here and I've prepped the canvas, um, put black gesso. This painting's gonna be a very dark painting, a lot and a lot of shadow. Um, so it, I just felt it'd be better to start with with a nice dark canvas. Now, after that, I've gone ahead and I've painted in um, with silver acrylic um, the border here. And the border is supposed to be sort of uh, astronomy. Um, so we've got some star charts and some other little designs here to kind of represent astronomy. Um, then I've wrote, I wrote his name here at the bottom. And, uh, and now that I've got that kind of taken care of, what I'll probably do just to kind of help it look a little more aged and weathered is after we finish the painting, I might come back through here on the border and create uh, a dark um, glaze, a very thin dark glaze, probably mixed with, uh, probably mixed with uh, raw umber or something to that, to that effect. And, um, and I'll probably use uh, liquid or something to that, to that effect. Uh, I don't want to have this painting be very glossy. I think I want to have it more of a matte finish. So uh, I think I can achieve that using some of the liquid, which also helps to dry quickly. So this is all done in acrylic. Now, I've drawn in our subject, Albus sitting in his chair, got some things going on in the background and um, I've used my charcoal pencil to draw that in. Now we're gonna go back with oils and we're going to complete the painting now all in oil. So uh, that's a little bit of an introduction. Um, got my palette set up and I think we're uh, ready to go. So I'll uh, kind of explain this palette real quickly and then we'll get going. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, just to um, discuss the palette real quick. Um, I've taken my five main colors, which um, are always starting with Burnt Umber, Ultramarine Blue, Thalo Red, Lemon Yellow, and Zinc Titanium White. Um, and this is just some uh, Ivory Black. Um, didn't use that as part of my flesh tones that I pre-mixed. That'll be used later on just to add um, a little of the shadowing and the dark regions to the painting. But with these five colors, I pre-mixed my colors here, my flesh tones, and I've kind of mixed them more toward the oranges and um, 
some of the reds. Um, this painting is again going to look a little bit aged. Um, it's going to be a little bit yellowed. So I wanted to make sure that uh, the images or the colors I'm seeing uh, in the reference photo are fairly close proximity to what I've mixed up here. Um, and then I'll just I'll mix beyond this um, on my palette um, using these seven colors and then I'll also mix directly uh, on the canvas. Uh, so that's what we're going to do there. Um, and I've got more details about my palette in past videos. You're welcome to to review that, but I typically use these five colors when I do portrait painting. And uh, it's very versatile and you can achieve all sorts of uh, skin flesh tones and so forth. Um, again, I'm using uh, my Masters Series um, Stay Wet palette. I've cut a sheet of glass and put it in here. And uh, we're gonna be obviously working all in oils um, on our painting. Uh, beyond this point. So uh, that's a little quick introduction to the palette. So I typically like to start my portrait sort of in the uh, middle of the face region. So um, kind of start around the eyes here and and I like to mix as I go, kind of uh, jumping between the the lights and the darks, and um, I I definitely try to blend um, on the canvas itself as I go about um, kind of forming these these basic features. So kind of work around the eyes. Uh, into the eyebrow and and then uh, and then I kind of move over into the other eye region and then into the nose and so this is kind of why I like to premix my colors all my flesh tones right on my palette and then have some further blending um, right here on the canvas as well. I'm using a very small brush. I'm using, uh, I think this is a, a 20 over zero brush. And um, this is one of my, I believe this is one of my rosemary brushes, uh, just a small round brush. So you wanna make sure to have a very fine point for these small detail um, if you've tuned into some of my past portrait videos, I kind of discuss my brushes and um, I use a couple different brushes. I, I'm not using any medium at all, um, using the color right from the tube and, um, and I'm not even really using any mineral spirits. Uh, I'm just wiping off my brush uh, on a paper towel. But I've got one brush for my dark colors and then a second brush for my lighter colors. And um, that helps me just to prevent any contamination. And then I can just simply wipe them off and then I can go back into a new color and and uh, continue, continue with this process. So this is just kind of my preferred method for, for painting the, uh, these portraits. I try to do everything in one sitting in terms of the flesh regions um, using the, using the wet on wet technique. Um, so that you can have that dry, that uh, that dry time, that slow dry time, and allow for some blending to occur. Um, I'll let several days go by after I do this, um, 
and then when when my paint is a little drier then I can come back and I can do some tweaks and and add some some dry brush techniques on top usually uh, more in terms of highlights so just try to bring this in again this is a very dark painting a lot of shadow um, so it's it's good to use the um, that dark underpainting that that we're starting with on the canvas here let that work for you and uh, try to use that quite a bit to assist in 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 forming all these shadows so moving into the hand region now and uh, just kind of come following the same basic technique that we did in the face region. Uh, typically, I like to start with my darker shadow colors and, um, and then slowly move into some of the lighter colors as well and just, just bounce back and forth between the two, introduce them onto the canvas and um, kind of really just map out exactly where the light regions and the dark regions lay um, and then of course you'll have the uh, intermediary colors um, between those shadows and lights so that you can have some good blending there and good transition from light to dark so that's kind of how I like to do this just kind of figure out where those live and then uh, you can go back through here and and slowly bring them the two together and and try to have a, a good transition so painting on Dumbledore's rings here really quickly and um, and we'll get this this hand kind of completed here of course I'll let this dry for a few days and go back again and and reintroduce some some more dry brush blending on top of this and um, just kind of soften soften and, and also bring in a, some more highlights as well so we'll get his other his other little hand here uh, he's kind of got him folded on his lap And surprisingly, this, this goes a lot quicker than one would think. Um, I probably just spent a few hours on blocking this in, this initial, this initial blocking phase. Um, it doesn't take an enormous amount of time, but, but as I mentioned, um, I, I like to kind of focus on the areas um, where, the, where the flesh is on the painting and get those kind of underway. So get that out of the way and then I can focus on other regions. Um, and so this is me kind of blocking in the beard now and I'm just using some dark colors I've, uh, that I mixed for my flesh tones. This is really more just ultramarine blue and burnt umber, um, a little white and um, and slowly kind of get this blocked in. And while it's still wet, I can come back with some lighter values um, and kind of just start to form the beard a little bit more and do this while it's still wet. So I like to kind of get the, the, general, the general shape in and some, some basic form to the beard. Um, and I can let that dry. And once that's dry after a few days, we can go back and actually start adding in more of the individual hair follicles into the beard. And this is me coming back and just kind of tweaking some color on the, and some shadow in the face region. And I'll do this quite a bit. I'll go back and I'll uh, 
continue to refine my shadows and my lights and and refine some of the shapes into the uh, into the features. It's um it's always a little bit challenging working um, a subject that is aged. Um, so with the lines and um, kind of the sunken cheek, the sunken eye sockets and the other features that come with age. Um, so you want to be careful as you bring in those, those uh, wrinkles, um, just make sure that they are soft and well blended and, and not just big and chunky and you just want to kind of make them delicate. So kind of reworking the mouth here a little bit more and kind of um, bringing the mouth and the and the hairline to the beard a little bit more in line with each other. And as I said, uh, by this point in time, a few days have passed. This underpainting of the beard is is fairly dry now, and I can kind of come back with some more individualized little hair uh, follicles um, and um, and just kind of get that worked in. I'm using my rigor brush here, um, so you just want to make sure to have a good small fine point uh, with your brush and the rigor does a good job of achieving that and I've just come through and and um, I'm, I'm using my my light flesh tones honestly I've added a little yellow and and white to it but um, but more or less I've kind of used my, my lightest flesh tone which I which I pre-mixed which was uh, really just the um, phthalo red and um, lemon yellow and um, and also mix that with uh, titanium zinc white um, but then to go back and, and just add more of those highlights with the yellow and the white and now we can kind of block in the rest of the beard region here a little bit more now he's got it kind of tied in the middle and of course his hair's quite long but kind of following through at the same basic um, approach that we did with with the primary beard get that all blocked in here of course it's going to be hanging over his clothing so we'll once we add the clothing in uh, later on we can come back and uh, kind of rework his hair a little bit more so that it cascades down a little better over the clothing region but again just kind of kind of get all this blocked in and do it in one quick s sitting and then um, we can allow that to dry a little bit more and we can rework that a little bit later there is an awful lot of light source coming from the left side and um, so so I'll have to go back uh, later on. I'll add some glazes, uh, which you'll see me do, uh, where I can really bring in some more uh, lighting to to the left side of his of his face and his beard. So it's just going to be a small, slow building process. Um, I'll let that sit there now. I can kind of start working on this um, this drape that we have behind him, and um, I've come through here and and I'm just using some burnt umber and some blue and a little white, making a really dark kind of uh, smoky, dark grayish color. And um, I'm using a little bit of mineral spirits just to uh, help it to spread and, and, and slide easily. Um, but I want to get this all kind of blocked in right now. And, and then I can come back and I can kind of work it and smooth it out. I'm just using a, 
a number 10 flat brush on that. And then I let that dry for a few days. And then I can come back now and sort of add some of the patterns into the that drape. Um, and I'm using uh, alizarin crimson here uh, with a little bit of umber and uh, some white and it's kind of forming those patterns. So what I'm doing now is I'm adding a glaze. Um, I want this back region to be really dark and as well as the curtain. So I've created a glaze out of mineral spirits and some liquid and, I'm, and I've added a little bit of umber and black to kind of create this dark but very trans very transparent glaze that I can go over that everything here and uh, kind of get it a little bit darker and richer and let that dry. Um, I also went over the runes uh, around the border. Um, I just want to get that a little darker and I'll and I'll redo that again. That just helps to kind of add some age, I think, kind of make it look a little bit aged and weathered. So now we can work on Dumbledore's uh, large throne-like chair. And um, I'm definitely using a lot of that, that dark background to help, you know, I'm, I'm kind of skipping around. I'm using uh, a lot of spacing um, and allowing a lot of that to show through. Um, so you, you don't have to work quite as hard by adding dark lines later on. Um, and and so again, it's a very dark painting, a lot of shadow, and uh, you want to allow that dark underpainting to really uh, be your friend and, and help you out with this process. But a lot of subtle colors, um, very bright in certain regions, but mostly mostly very muted and dark. And uh, I think that's what's, what's going to help um, kind of s set the tone on this painting. So now I'm just uh, using my mall stick here and uh, trying to keep my hand a bit off the canvas um, and some of, the, some of the wet regions that I have. Very handy little device uh, for this. So I've kind of pre-mixed my, my uh, colors for the, for the large chair and um, I'm really using uh, my umber and, and uh, my sienna in, in a little yellow and, um, and that's where I'm kind of jumping between my umber and my sienna um, just to kind of form the the lights and the shadows here of course his his body and his head's going to be forming uh casting a big shadow on the right side of this chair so a lot of this on the right side is going to be kind of subtly moving into um into shadow and dark and darkness. So, so um, I, I'm kind of coming back here and as I move into shadow, I'm kind of bringing a little bit more ultramarine blue into my, my uh, raw umber. And, um, and of course, allowing the underpainting to really help, help me out with this and, and work in these shadows. All right, so we'll leave that alone for now. I can kind of work on the beads on his on his beard. Um, this is sufficiently dry now that I can get that in here. We can start working on his clothes. And I've pre-mixed sort of a, an emerald green color here. And um, and I've mixed a couple piles of, of emerald green in various different values of, of light and dark that I can kind of jump jump through. But what we're gonna do here is, is just primarily block this in. 
Um, and then while it's wet, I can begin to introduce some of the lighter colors. And, and mostly what I've done here is I'm going into my pile of, of white. And, um, and while that darker green is, is still wet, that white will pick up that green underpainting and it'll help to um, just create a lighter value of that green. So I, I really am just going into my pure white and, and allowing that mixing to occur directly on the canvas. And I come back and, and I go into uh, more of my black and my umber for the darker regions. And, and again, the same principle comes into play. Um, it'll pick up some of that green and, and it'll kind of create a darker green as it picks up some of that color in the back. Um, and that'll help to create some of those soft transitions between light and dark. So there's quite a lot of ruffle in his cloak that he's wearing here. And um, so I first am coming in with uh, with a darker version of my of my emerald, uh, which I've mixed with umber, um, and that and that emerald green color that I that I've made, and um, and then just kind of bounce back and forth. I kind of start with the the darker emerald color, and then come back with some of my transition lights, and um, Kind of, kind of block them in. I can come back later and I'll, and I'll soften them a little more around the edges and try to get a good transition going here. But this is where the dark underpainting can really, can really benefit because it is um, just so much shadow within the folds and wrinkles of his, of his cloak. And, if, and as you get kind of lower down his his body, um, obviously it naturally starts to transition darker. I'll come back later with some more uh, darker glazes. Um, again, using mineral spirits, using my some liquid, kind of mixing the two together, uh, and then really forming a good transparent dark color, which I use um, really just pure burnt umber um, as, as that glaze color, um, but making it very transparent. Then I can go back over the, the lower uh, portions of his, of his garment um, and, and really darken those up even more and, and bring a little bit more shadow into that. Uh, the goal I'm kind of trying to do here is just really really create the suggestion that there's some clothing there, but, but um, without really working too, too hard on trying to uh, sell that. Um, the human mind wants to naturally draw conclusions um, without being offended. So um, it, it's good just to let the human mind um, do that. And, and and your job as an artist is just to create that illusion and and then allow the viewer to kind of complete the conclusion uh, in their mind. And um, and so just really shadow uh, subtle subtle um, little um, just indications of of clothing here is really all that's going to be needed and that's where using your dark uh, black uh, underpainting is, is going to really help with this so you want to watch the negative space and um, and allow it to be your friend and that that armrest just a couple a couple very subtle uh, little brush strokes is all it's needed here. I'm not going to form the entire 
I'm not going to inform the entire uh, armrest. There's just no point. It, it's it's pretty much implied. A couple simple lines here on the right side, and then mostly in shadow. Using um, subjects that have a lot of shadow in them, especially in portrait painting, is what I would recommend. Um, it, it makes, I think, for the best paintings. Now, I'm coming back with, with um, more yellow. I've gone into my emerald mixture, and I've added a little bit more zinc titanium white and some lemon yellow here. And I'm just coming back through now and, and kind of hitting this again. Um, a day or two has passed now, so it's kind of a little bit drier, so it's easier to kind of dry brush this on. Now I'm coming back with my first glaze here uh, and just adding a little bit more of that light pale yellow color um, to the left side of his beard uh, just to get a little bit more a little bit more light there and it's just a, a very transparent yellow. Okay now we can kind of move into his his hat that he's wearing here it's kind of hanging over the back of the chair a little bit um, so I've I've brought, come in with my my raw umber, and then I'm coming back with my sienna now on top of that, and just kind of bouncing around and using some of the background black to help out with this. And using some more emerald color here, um, and just a couple simple little strokes here, and that's really all we need. There's not a lot of detail; it's just a lot of shadow on on his hat. Coming with a few more highlights here, and that'll be all we need. All right, so we're going to work on this little table. Uh, he's got kind of a little book that's kind of flapped open a little bit, and um, just using some umbers and sienas for that. And I've come back with my crimson now, and I'm just kind of dry brushing this on, really. Uh, you don't need a lot of detail here, just the indication that there's, a, there's kind of a tabletop here and uh, add a few little highlights, some designs. Now I'm coming back with another glaze. I want to make the chair look a little bit more weathered and old, and, I, and my glaze is, is nothing more than just raw umber, very transparent raw umber that I'm kind of going through here and, and rehitting that. Getting the side of his beard a little darker um, with those glazes. Um, kind of hitting certain folds and creases and going back with the glaze here. Now this is where I'm going back at the bottom and getting it a little darker with my with my umber glaze. And this just helped to kind of make it look a little bit older and definitely more in shadow. And so that's the wonderful thing about using glazes for this. I'm rehitting my my borders again, making those a little darker and uh, with the final kind of glaze here. Now I can sign it, call it done. So appreciate you tuning in and uh, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's Mark Harvel Art and um, this was a fun project. Um, a lot simpler than you probably think because you, you know you don't again you use a lot of that under painting and and uh, and it's not nearly as time consuming as one would think in that, but it, it comes out to be a very effective uh, painting and quite unique. So thanks so much for tuning in and um, please uh, please tune in again. Thank you.